Good morning. Uh, hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, good morning. I noticed that I, I don't have access to the public calendar anymore. Any ideas? I feel like something crazy has been going on with that calendar. <laughs> so I clicked that link and I, I was told that calendar is not public. I don't have access. Like you're not allowed to look at it or you're not allowed to update it? I cannot even see any like meeting there it's all empty on the open telemetry public calendar yeah mm. i can share my screen Midori, I love wherever you are. Can you see my screen? Thanks. Yeah. My backyard. That's awesome. This is what yeah. I got. <laughs> yeah, I can see your screen, man. Yeah, and I don't have information. It's a public calendar. So. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. All right. This thing. 
In chance you can try that in uh, like an anonymous window. I tried. Public calendar. Yeah. If it works for you, probably it's uh, it's like some like like uh, region specific problem, I guess. So yeah. this this is John Watson. I think what I what I've seen is that the general link at the top of the doc is fine and goes to a calendar that makes sense, but the individual links to the individual meetings don't go to something that is not visible, like you just showed. I see. I'll I'll, I'll try again. So probably we need to update that readme document. So the links in the community readme. Yeah. Right yeah, some of the links already expired. Like you know, we have the Teams meeting there, but nobody uses the Teams meeting anymore. Yep. Okay. That sounds like there's an action item. I feel like Morgan has been trying to uh, deal with some of this stuff. Um, bring it up with him, but I'm just gonna put this in calendar right now. Like. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the calendar continues to have problems. Uh, old links, sounds like what? Old links in community repo are broke. Uh, I feel like we need to have something about, if we're gonna use these CNCF Zoom meetings, I was trying to recreate the Go uh, SIG, which was part of the disappearing meetings from the calendar and realized I wasn't totally clear to me how to, uh, what Zoom I should be adding to that. Are you still uh, having this problem or you need help? I saw that, um, you responded. I haven't looked at your what you wrote yet, uh, Sergey. But yeah, it seems like if if we have a set of Zoom meetings, can we like have them posted somewhere? Maybe in the community. Yeah, just take a look at this link. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and marking it with a color. So these are why the meetings are different colors now. Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, I mean, otherwise it's really hard to like distinguish these numbers. There is no names on in the link. Sergey, could you maybe give us a quick brief? Where can we find info on? Oh, it's still in PR. So basically what happened is uh, uh, we spent a little bit too much time on configuring Zoom rooms, but now we have three Zoom rooms. They all start recording automatically. You see this blinking recording light when you join. So join, host is not required to join, uh, but the only problem is, um, and there is no limit for of 40 minutes that we used to happen have before. So, oh yeah, great. Uh, the only problem is um, uh, you cannot have two meetings in the same room at the, at the same time. So you need to. Uh, uh, so I suggest to call color code all the meetings in a calendar. So back to back meetings. So meeting held in the same time wouldn't be um, sharing the same room. Oh great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just glanced at this PR. I pasted a, the PR Sergey made into the, the meeting notes here. Um, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And the only thing we need to validate, I mean, we kind of tried it already with um, uh, one of the like uh, person who helping us on CNCF side, uh, how to post a recording. So hopefully after that meeting, this meeting, I will try to like follow the procedure and try to post it. Yeah. Um, just FYI, Sergey, since you're looking at this stuff, there's been something going on where the meetings have been like disappearing from the calendar. And we haven't been able to get to the bottom of like why that was happening. It was either people updating the meetings and maybe not like forgetting a couple when they updated them or maybe like there's the degree to which this stuff might be attached to like some Google room calendaring stuff or something like that where there's some automated system that might be mucking with them but just so you know there's been some funny business where the the meetings have been just disappearing from the calendar okay yeah. so just, just FYI, if you see that <laughs> we haven't quite figured out what what what's been causing that okay 
All right. So we've got the Zoom meetings, old links in the community repo are broke. Maybe that's like it for now on the calendar stuff. Uh, Riley, I'll try to follow up with you later to confirm that we've fixed everything. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sweet. Um, I just got back from the woods, so I don't have an agenda for this meeting. Uh, I can throw some things on the agenda, um, and I know there is definitely some spec work in flight at the moment uh, that I imagine some people would want to talk about. Um, I think so Bogdan is here, right? Yeah, Bogdan's here. We got Josh here. We got we got the whole crew here. Um, so yeah. maybe if people would like to just spend a couple minutes adding their spec items to the agenda, just uh, please paste in anything there that you would like eyes on, either to discuss in this meeting or to get approvals, just uh, to make sure we can fast track the remaining spec work. I think all the items in specs are, are important. So everyone who has approval, uh, uh, at least approval status for specs and uh, RFCs, please, please put more effort into reviewing all these things. Um, I, I would not necessarily call one more important than the other, but I think you, everyone should uh, review all of them. We're also short of uh, reviewers and approvers in the Go repo. Like there's only f sort of three active approvers right now. Um, and Ted's like practically not involved, but has been like helping out by approving things when I nag him. So I'm trying to get more people there as well. Um, and Paolo and someone I don't even know are, are like listed, but not, not present. So we got to get more people in there. Okay, I will do, I will call, I will talk to Paolo and everyone. From S SJ, Stephen Karras, I don't know who he is actually. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but those are the other two who are currently listed. And then I'm going to try and nominate uh, Krasimir that we've been working with who did the open tracing bridge as soon as he finishes that big PR. I'll check with Paolo and Stephen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Tigran, also, if they don't have time, uh, you, you may want to replace one of them if you, are, if you have time or... Yeah, more, more Go reviewers would be very helpful. Sure, I'll check with them and go mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, and uh, maybe a reminder in general, because uh, we've got some SIG leaders here. Uh, consider, um, it may have been a while since uh, people in your group were nominated uh, to be approvers or maintainers or something like that. So if you're uh, leading a SIG, Think about whether there's people who've been contributing lately who could be added to those ranks so that yeah. we can kind of broaden access. Yeah, we did that for, for JavaScript. Mayur did a good job of adding two or three new people that proved themselves very, very active and everything, so. Awesome. awesome. We have Python as well. Sweet. Uh, yeah, and to remind everyone, in order to uh, to add someone, you have to do a PR on the community, add the person to the list of contributors with the status that you, you are proposing and put there the links to the PRs and work that they did uh, and try to match the requirements that are defined in the community membership. Sweet. Um, there's a related thing just around, uh, uh, we don't have to talk about it a lot right now, but um, trying to help out with just sort of backlog triaging in general. We have some people uh, who could be helping more with just like project management and backlog management. It seems like it would be nice to have some kind of role that was like a community manager role or a triage role where it would be possible to get uh, backlog access like across the organization. I think there's like actually a triage or GitHub level that lets you do things like set and remove labels and manipulate issues and PRs, but you can't merge or do some of the other things. 
Um, so that's another way we might be able to get uh, some more help on this project. If you have somebody in mind, let me know. <laughs> yeah, well, we've got uh, Midori here on the call, who's uh, uh, joined, uh, just joined my team at Lightstep. Uh, she'll be doing a lot of uh, engineering management, which will include a lot of like open telemetry project management. Okay. Um, so she can definitely help with that. But I don't know if we had like a concept for this kind of access that we wanted to, to add to the community repo. That's something people have been thinking just, about. Uh, uh, per repository basis, so uh, basically every maintainer should just allow her into group, and it's fine. Yeah. An easiest way to do that is uh, to add into approvers group, but don't add in, into code uh, owners file. This way, uh, you will be able to triage, but you wouldn't be able to um, merge anything. So basically, become an approver for every project, but yeah. not a code owner. Uh, yeah. And to clarify. I'm actually um, a director of Eng over here at Lightstep, and I'm going to be working with the OTEL group. Um, I'm not sure that I'm actually going to be that community manager. Uh, I don't necessarily have that kind of time, uh, but it's something to take a look at and, and delegate down. So stay tuned for that in terms of what we should do and what process we should follow. Yeah. Welcome. Anyway. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, we have a couple other people who can help out in this regard, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, we don't necessarily have a dedicated community manager person over here, just to be clear. Um, but we do have uh, like another uh, Amelia, uh, who is like director of marketing here and doing a lot of open source work and getting involved with open telemetry. She might, she's going to be helping out more too around stuff like the website uh, and things of that nature. So we'll be looking maybe for access for people like that. Uh, who won't be looking to like click the approve button, but might be looking to help out uh, just like uh, direct and manage uh, people working on stuff. Cool. Well, while, while we're announcing new people, uh, so I'm John Watson. I'll be, I'm going to be here from New Relic, uh, as I've heard some people might be leaving. <coughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going to be uh, helping out. Hi, John. Howdy. Do we have other new people on the call? Well, I won't force us all to go through a round of introductions right now. I'm, I'm new because I'm <laughs> cold, so I'm a new person. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so should we, should we, um, start with more uh, questions yes. from the community and the uh, concerns and other things and before we go into that uh, do you mind if you uh, short, briefly go into milestones because like all the triage work that uh, we need to do needs to fit in some milestones and you need to just uh, yeah just everybody find with uh, some milestones i pasted the link it's basically like it's a very uh, uh i mean it's not like uh some important document i, I can share my screen if you yeah, go for it. Uh, can you see it? Hello? Yep, I can see it. Oh. Yep, you're good. Uh, so yeah, uh, we're all talking about alpha release. So, you know, we already shipped the uh, beginning of summer, we shipped the uh, API proposal. And after that, we have, uh, we established the OTEP pr uh, process and we uh, uh, merged a couple of OTEP's uh, proposals already. So. We have a process on, uh, at hand uh, how to uh, go forward and move this uh, um, procedure forward. Uh, now we're talking about alpha release. And uh, when I came back from parental leave, everybody's saying like alpha needs to happen this month. Uh, however, uh, <clears throat> after talking with many people, I, re <clears throat> I realized that there is no, uh, documentation is not complete for what we want to call alpha. So even if language will ship alpha, specification is not there yet. And uh, I think optimistically, we can try to uh, get um, API spec to alpha release uh, like this week. If we will all work hard and like uh, we will merge metrics proposal completely, we will merge a couple more pull requests and flights that maybe uh, we can uh, hit the date. Um, and then uh, after that, I think in one week optimistically again, we can do uh, SDK spec uh, 
uh, that will include some Zipkin and Jaeger and Prometheus data mapping. Uh, I noticed somebody already started the Zipkin data mapping and uh, it's really cool. I mean, it will help a lot uh, to implement it in different languages. Um, and then uh, languages, I mean, optimistically, like people can, like uh, Python group uh, recently met and uh, I uh, talked to them and uh, there is a, a good chance that they will finish uh, everything this week-ish. So like a specifications update, they, uh, they probably can update uh, um, what they're shipping. So maybe they even ship it like the same date, 10.4, but uh, uh, realistically you need a little bit of time to clean up. So maybe 10.11 is a uh, possible day, date for alpha. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, together, like, uh, what alpha is releases about, and I, I, I know there is an agenda item about like a alpha and uh, better definition. So maybe this, um, uh, I want to talk about spirit of alpha. I think spirit, like uh, we want to get alpha so we can demo something. So we can uh, uh, start showing it to people. We can uh, give it uh, somebody to play with and uh, uh, try out um, implementing adapters, uh, implementing data collectors, uh, uh, trying out in, in applications. So it should be demoable kind of product. Yeah. And I would say um, not just demoable, we need to exercise it, right? Yeah. Uh, and demo will all the way to like some uh, open source uh, data collector, ideally. Yeah. So Prometheus and Zip and Jaeger, uh, something like that should be there. I think um, once you have a demo, you can exercise it. Before you have a demo, you cannot really exercise it. So. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, for beta release, uh, looking at dates, I mean, sorry for uh, uh, photo of whiteboard, but uh, basically you have like, if you finish uh, 10, 11, uh, for um, all the lang like alpha version, you only have one, two, three, uh, four, five weeks before Cubicon. And uh, if you will target uh, beta release as uh, proposed in OTAP to be uh, very stable, almost like a release candidate kind of uh, quality of APIs, then we probably will exercise all those five weeks to get it to this level. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, um, and I, I discussed with Bogdan, I, I haven't talked to anybody else yet, but uh, I think uh, for beta, we can target uh, specification complete for Cubicon. And then by the end of the year, probably it will be uh, like languages can uh, implement it, uh, given all the vacations and uh, holidays. Thanks so, for doing that, guys. I really appreciate it. So I think uh, if we can, uh, for now, we can uh, start creating this uh, uh, milestones like, uh, uh, one, two, three, like uh, API spec complete, SDK spec complete in language alpha. And uh, then for beta, probably uh, just big uh, uh, milestone, like overall kind of uh, milestone, and then we can split it uh, further and uh, start aggressively triage what goes into API spec, SDK spec, and language alpha. Uh, so let's try to hit uh, these dates. Uh, if, if you feel that these dates are completely unaccomplishable, we probably need to move it. And, Again, they're quite optimistic in my uh, mind. Yeah. Um, so I placed a, a link to the documented uh, uh, notes. So, yeah. Sergey, so, I think that looks great. I've been keeping some notes, not anything official, but just some notes that I share with people. And what you wrote here looks similar to the notes I've been keeping. Uh, so I think this feels realistic to me. <laughs> Um, I'm happy for us to be shifting the milestones to say we're, we're going to have something more like a beta, not a 1.0 at the end of the year. Um, just realistically, the amount of exercise this stuff is going to get, uh, the being able to like get it feature complete. I think we can definitely do that, but you know, there's like that last mile from feature complete to you know, something that we're saying is going to be stable with some long-term support guarantee or something like that. So this makes me feel more confident. Um, my one concern is just like November, December, I think are going, I predict those two months will just be a total wash um, because we've got KubeCon, uh, we've got Thanksgiving, and then all the Christmas vacations. So I think like the number of actual work weeks in those last two months will be like, like one or two weeks or something crazy small like that. So we might want to consider not 
wh whether or not you know anything realistically will happen in November and December. Let's see how it goes. That's why I don't want to create beta milestones yet, like very detailed, so we can just have a catch all kind of beta milestone. Um, I'd like to uh, add a graphic to the website. Let me see if I can just post this into the uh, meeting notes. It's a funny thing. First, I got to download it and I got to upload it. So, this is something that Austin's been working on. Come on. Come on. Okay. So I just dragged a proposed graphic into the meeting notes uh, as something to throw on the website. Um, that kind of is a sort of at a glance uh, where are we at with the different projects. Um, there is some request maybe to remove the release candidate stage, but just alpha beta v1.0. Uh, obviously, there's no details here, but as like a first step, um, once we start releasing alphas, it would be great to get something like this up on the website. Um, and uh, along with a definition of what alpha means, what beta means, maybe shying away a little bit from promising dates to people, I feel like we should maybe focus more on like what what's going to be in these steps and maybe move a bit farther away from promising exact due dates uh, because we're engineers and we're poor at predicting exactly when we're going to deliver things. But it would be better to maybe, yeah, get some more concrete information up onto the website about what expectations should be for alpha and beta. I think, I think if we don't have dates, I think dates would also help to push us a bit more on 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 some focus more, let's say. And I, I don't think dates are necessarily that bad. Uh, as long as we say that this is tentative date or whatever you call it. But yeah. Some some qualification. I, I've liked that having these these deadlines have like I agree they pushed us, but I've also had some other interactions with people who it's for whatever reason they were really baking into their plans they were going to get some stable open telemetry thing in the next couple of months um, so, so i will make a make, like miles i'll create milestones and uh, i'll start triaging issues uh please don't uh, take offense if you uh, mistriage something just like let me know uh it's a lot of issues it's like so many of them so uh, it may be, there may be mistakes uh yeah. if you want to participate we can uh, uh definitely do it together uh, maybe we can like do first uh, round uh, offline and then like meet and discuss uh, questionable issues. I'd happy, be happy happy to help you with that. Okay. So up to the next topic. Sweet. Um, oh, and there is a, um, a OTEP proposal for beta from Liz Fong Jones. I don't know if you saw that, Sergey. But yeah, I mentioned that, that uh, I saw it. But okay. I, I, I wasn't uh, sure who proposed it, but yeah. Okay, moving on, um, named tracers. So this is a proposal along the lines of components or somehow namespacing, uh, um, contextualizing traces and perhaps metrics, right? Uh, does someone from Dynatrace want to talk about this? Yeah, so it's once again named traces. Um, we, we overhauled the, the proposal quite a bit recently and just uh, today and, and the last days we incorporated the last uh, feedback we got from you guys, especially from Bogdan and Jen Yuri. And I just wanted to ask if you could have another look at it and and see if your concerns have been addressed, hopefully, so that we could probably finally get into get it into a proposed state. Great.
Um, I think this looks great, but yeah, uh, I think the action item here is just everyone have a look at this thing. I don't know that we have enough time to discuss in detail on this call. No, I don't think it's necessary. So I think we have a couple of uh, approvals already, but yeah, if you could take your time and have, have a yeah. further look at it, it'd be good. Uh, it does look good. I, I do agree with uh, Bogdan at a glance that like it would be good to understand how metrics can be con uh, correlated or contextualized with this stuff. Can I comment? Like the only thing that I want is almost all the arguments there, if you re replace tracer with meter and spans with metric, yeah. they're all make sense. Yeah. <laughs> so I would propose a very small change, but uh, yeah. Anything else looks good. Yeah. yeah. This is something I'm trying to grapple with a little bit, which is uh, we have added a lot of this contextualization and context propagation stuff has traditionally been on the tracer. But now that we have metrics and maybe logs and these other verticals, some kind of lower level context propagation object that contains these kinds of correlations and namespaces and resources and stuff like that seems like would be the better place to put this so that all these different kinds of observability can have access to this information. Because it seems like you want to know what metric, like if a metric is in a component, you want to know that too. Um, so that's like worth discussing how, how these things actually I work. I definitely agree with. Can you, can you repeat that a uh, bit? So if we're saying that we're, we're adding context so that people can, can correlate information later. And so we're adding something that's like a component level context where we're saying there's a set of resources and um, any observation that comes out of this part of the program uh, can be correlated with this set of resources, right? So it might be spans that are coming out of a component have these you know, component resources on them. But also it seems like if you were making a metric in that component, you know, mm -hmm. doing a count or gauge, you might want to use those resources to correlate those counts or gauges in some way. And so there's just a question of like, is that are metrics being correlated by traces or are all of these things using some shared way of correlating each other similar to like the distributed context tag so map and stuff right it's not like that first of all we do not want to correlate every event so for example we're not gonna we're not gonna know uh we we know only when a metrics uh, is created or a span is created the component correct mm -hmm. for example when you when you do add one attribute to a span, we do not know that that attribute was added from this component or from the other. We're gonna attribute everything to the, to the component that started the span because that's the only operation for spans that happens on the tracer. All the other operations are happens on the span. So we assume that everything belongs to that span. So, right. so and it's true for metrics as well. So with these components, we just mark the, the creation of a trace uh, of a span or metric with the component that created them, correct? It's mm -hmm. so yeah. we're not gonna we're not gonna correlate events with this. We're just gonna know the the entity that created the span or created the metric. We identified the the creation of this. We are not identifying requests or between requests or anything. There is no correlation across requests. Does it make sense what I'm saying? It's, I think so. I, th I think we're kind of saying the same thing, though. Maybe we're using different words. Just you, you have some entity, like a component. That component's got a bunch of, you know, it's got like a map of keys and values on it. Right? I, don't think, I don't think we should do a map of mm -hmm. values. For the moment, we are pushing hard on only having a name and a version. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the last uh, piece of input I incorporated. So we were talking about using resources earlier. But as it looks like resources are going away from the API surface, so we uh, dialed back a little bit here. And basically, the creation mechanism is to trace a name and an optional version, but that's it. So that's all the, the context information you would get out from the, the creation, creation time, yeah. Mm. Right? Yeah. You should read it. Uh, yeah. 
I'll okay. follow up. I wasn't aware resources were totally going away. Uh, it's not so totally like going it. away. It's just moving to the SDK and they, they will okay. describe the... So we will use them to describe the process and the, the overall service, the binary that is running. We will still do the same thing, but we, we believe that at the API level, people will not know where do you run or, or things like this. So except the component, which is one small thing that people may know at the compilation time, or sorry, not at the compilation time, but at the library instrumentation, at the instrumentation time, they, they will know which component they are in. That's the only contextual or environment thing that they, they, they can configure. A bunch of other things needs to be configured in the main file or when you run the, the binary, correct? Yeah. I, I personally feel this is a little too restrictive, but I'm happy to go forward with a restrictive proposal. Like, yeah. I do think that there are attributes that belong on the static tracer slash meter slash implementation that an implementation might want to vary inside of a process that are not dynamic context. So it's equivalent to a component or a service label, but they're sort of effectively resources. But I'm totally okay with us punting on that discussion. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the, the reason why I'm leaning a little bit into having a separate uh, OTAP for metrics and for logs because probably these uh, arguments you supply at creation time, they, they could vary and we have to think it through for the, for the other use cases. And so if you have a working proposal for, for traces, we have a, a reduced a focus, reduced scope, so it will be easier to, to think all the corner cases through and I think we should do the, the same scrutiny for metrics and logs later. I, I would feel very bad having completely different APIs to get a tracer versus a meter because that's what you are proposing right now. I mean, you are proposing changing the way how I get access to a tracer and for meters will be different and that's very bad experience. So, so we either have a consistent, we, we try to keep them cons very consistent in, in mm -hmm. that regard and having them completely different ways to act, to, to get an instance of a tracer is a meter, it's probably a bad thing. Okay, so you are looking for um, say one single factory for producing all these signals or whatever we may call it, or would it be okay with a metric factory, let's say, because then it wouldn't change that much. So it will probably I, be, a, it will be a meter factory. You, you have a tracer yeah. factory, you will have a meter factory, but I want to have, yeah. I have to, I want to have yeah. consistency between these two, two, two things. Um, sure, I want to have consistency as well, but I, but I wouldn't throw it all into one OTEP because what about logging, for example? We don't know a lot about logging right now, so I cannot have a, uh, a complete spec for it at the moment. It, this is sort of what I was getting at with feeling like uh, I, I yearn for what Bogdan was saying is like we should have some kind of consistent form of, of producing this stuff. Um, and I, I wonder whether or not all of this stuff, like what component you're in and all these things could be a lower level thing. I don't have a strong proposal for that, but it's more perhaps a plea for consistency and simplicity on this front. Like the way that I go about getting a meter and, you know, saying it's in this component or it's correlated with this or that hopefully is similar to how I like get a tracer and interact with that or get some logger thing if that shows up later. Yeah, so I think I think we should have the same mechanism to get a logger or a meter or a tracer. Now, now there is a good question that uh, raised here by by Josh and Ted. If we want to allow people to set extra labels besides the 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 uh, uh, name and version name and version, which I I'm, I'm not against. So for for me, the main the main idea against this is. Do we really want people to understand our concept of resource? So here, here I'm, I'm talking about a, a library developer that instruments that library. Do I need to, to tell him what a resource is and why these are, are merging with the other things and so on? So for me, for me, it was like, even though we add, even if we add 
people to add more uh, more labels or static labels or whatever we call this the fact that everything becomes a resource and things like this we i don't need to teach everyone uh, uh in the world so only people who are like gonna configure this need to understand all these things i don't know uh, that was my 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 mind like i'm trying to limit the amount of information that people need to to mm -hmm. learn in order to use this api and then yeah in order to to configure and run in production you will need to learn a bit more but this um this did come up in open tracing uh we didn't have this concept of resources or component and in fact, in general, because it was just an API, you know, when you initialized your SDK, whatever that was, that would be the place where you would stick all these resources. So this proposal of moving the resources back to the SDK rather than the API looks very much to me like using Jaeger with open tracing, um, you know, that was, or using the light step tracer with open tracing. Uh, yeah. And that worked fine. Uh, it actually avoids some awkward issues around initialization potentially. So, but um, I, I just want to say the one thing though, but people did actually miss having some more standard way to like talk about that information because it wasn't part of like the open tracing API. There was no way to the same way we're forming semantic conventions and stuff around. Yes, but, but the difference now, the difference now, Ted, is we do going to have semantic conventions for this because it's part of our SDK. And as part of our SDK, we do provide semantic conventions for this. And everyone who is using the SDK as the, as the core implementation for their, for their exporting, like for, for Lightstep, if you are using this, you will have the same resource as uh, somebody who is using for Zipkin or for, for, uh, for Yager. So at least we ensure consistency, even though it's not in the API, it's in the, the SDK. We, we do achieve one of the things that we do going to have uh, semantic conventions for this. Yeah, and that might be totally fine. Um... I, I'm also fine being conservative about what we put in the API and starting with things in the SDK and we're like, Ugh, it really would be better if we expose this more, like changing it later. Uh, so I'm fine. But I just want to note that, yeah, people did miss not having uh, some way of describing this stuff through the API when they're using open tracing. Maybe it'll be fine because we've got a more standardized SDK now, so people won't feel like it's as weird. But that was... Uh, the feedback that we got from open tracing. Josh, were you going to say something? I saw you unmute for a moment. Well, yeah, okay. I think it's really complicated, this issue. And I, and I, I think we should just settle it with, we're gonna be conservative and go with the minimum at this point. I, I do think that users are gonna to wanna to have an SDK independent way to add resources, but we can wait on this. Yeah. It's very complicated. Yeah. The, the we core thing is global getting... initialization first. Yeah. Getting this component concept in there in just any form, I think is the important thing. Yeah. And so starting with like the tiniest form we can come up with, I think is, is very, uh, but that's, that's really the core problem was not having this concept, so. Yeah, and Ted, you and I have discussed how there, that there might be this third thing, which is sort of like shared by both the meter and the tracer, which gets your resources for you and it, it sort of represents an SDK. The hardest part was putting a name on that and I, and I don't even wanna have the discussion right now. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Well, I think we've talked about name tracers plenty. Uh, people, please uh, have a look at that uh, OTEP. Uh, next up, uh, SpanKind as an option during span creation. Who put this one up? I put it on the agenda because I was uh, looking th uh, through all the open items today. And I think this one looks basically done. So it looks like ready for, for emerging if nobody has any uh, anything against it. So. Yeah. The only I thing I would wonder about this for people to consider is whether or not this information is like metadata that you're adding or whether this is like stuff that's like 
a concrete part of the span. We oh, ran into this question in the bridge. So the open tracing bridge has a semantic convention declared called span.kind. And if somebody sets an attribute on an open tracing span, span.kind, how do we represent that in open geometry? It gets back to the same thing you just said though, Ted. Yeah. I was just One of the reasons I, I was looking at that today is because it's basically uh, implemented in some of the, the languages, for example, in .NET already. So this is a part where the spec is actually uh, behind or, or out of sync with some of the implementations. So we should therefore have a look at it and decide if we want to have it or there or, or if we should change something in their language implementations. Mm -hmm. I think this was decided when we do, uh, did the first bootstrap, uh, Ted, I can show you where you documented this. Uh, so uh, this was decided as part of the porting from Open Census because we had this and we 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 agreed to keep it there. Uh, and I think I think the the purpose of the PR was just to document what we you know, what was there. And now if we are proposing to change this. I'm happy, but I think we should document what we have in order to make sure everything is documented. And mm. happy to to accept a, a PR that changes this and make it uh, an attribute and we can argue if that is the right thing or not. I, I think it's a small bike shed either way, uh, but uh, yeah. Cool. But I definitely think it should be there one way or the other as an option during span creation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, if it ends up being on the span object and you know, it would have been cleaner to put it as an attribute. I don't think that's actually a big deal in the long term. Proposal to separate context propagation from observability. This is my garbage that I have to update. Uh, this is just trying to get a very high level description in there about context propagation and uh, the way you could have several different systems using context propagation. So an observability system and then a baggage system that's separate from it. The main idea here is to figure out what actually needs to be shared between uh, these different systems, what actually would need to be in a context object versus uh, up in an observability object. And it's also an attempt to kind of describe it in a way that looks like a little more formal than uh, a little bit farther away from like the Java spec version that we've been doing so far. Um, so I need to take another pass at this today to add in feedback from people I've been talking to over the past week. Um, but if people have any general feedback, like what the fuck is this thing or anything along those lines, like, please, please let me know. I've had positive feedback that this has helped people wrap their heads around like the general shape of this project. So I think it would be useful to go into either the spec or the website in some form like that. But I don't know, I didn't add this to the agenda uh, today. So if someone else added it because they wanted to talk about it, then let me know. Otherwise, maybe move on to metrics. Yeah, <clears throat> all right. Um, so I posted a large specification draft on Friday and uh, it has received um, several people's feedback already. Um, my, I wanna kind of have a meta conversation here because it's not to get down to the details, but the question I have is sort of like this, there's already too much feedback for any one person except me perhaps to follow in this PR, it's going to get out of control very fast. Um, so I think like the, in the OTEPS repo, where we kind of had a practice of merging PRs and then getting fresh PRs to start start new discussions to kind of keep everyone synced up with the current state, I'm wondering if we should have a practice there for the specification repo or whether I should kick this back into OTEPS and sort of like create an OTEP that says, here's this draft for a new metric specification in its full form, please comment and using the sort of procedure that we've developed there. Um, or could we have a kind of work in progress directory of the specification repo where I could get this merged uh, so that we aren't creating a center thread of feedback that is hard to jump into. Um, that's my question for the group. 
I think I think there are two things here. One is that there's like a different kind of feedback on the, the spec and in OTEPs, like a lot of the feedback on the spec is is not um, you know, about about the ideas in the OTEPs and whether you should approve them, but like at least a lot of my feedback on the metrics spec VR uh, was about the wording and the presentation of the ideas and you know, things that are, that are left out but described in the OTEPs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I appreciate your feedback, Chris. And I think that what I'm trying to say is that I can go through each of your feedback points today and, and write, revise the text. There's some big questions and some sort of smaller questions. Um, but I'm afraid that uh, any, I can't really go ask other people to kind of join in to this conversation because it's, if you look at the GitHub conversation, it's already quite long. And um, as soon as I make a change and push it, like the comments start to kind of stray from, uh, from the current head, I guess. Um, anyway, I guess I'm, it's more a question about procedures than about um, semantics at this so point. I it's, so I, I think this, this procedure that we've got now in the OTEPS uh, repo does, doesn't work um, because we're merging things in and then there's not really any nice workflow for commenting on uh, like on documents that have been submitted and not approved. So I think everybody has this nice workflow for PRs, right, where we can comment on a proposed document. But, you know, we have a procedure that doesn't actually match the GitHub workflow right now where we're supposed to comment on uh, proposed docs. And even in the OTEPs, like repo right now, I see many more comments before a document makes it to proposed than I do in between proposed and approved. And that, that suggests to me the process is wrong here. I, yeah, I think we haven't quite followed the process that we described though. So there was an idea of creating a work in progress PR for every proposed uh, OTEP. Ted, you were gonna say something. Well, I was just gonna kind of plus one what Chris said is, I think the original proposal here was, yeah, we would quickly merge these in so people could see the proposals and there would be issues to discuss this stuff. But uh, yeah, the way GitHub actually works, I you have all of, all of your commenting and review tools are kind of on the PR. Um, I'm wondering if um, the new GitHub action stuff might help us with some of the automation, like to speed things up since we could automate a bunch of the steps. Yeah, I wonder if we could just simplify. I noticed that like for these OTEPs, unless they are like too big, it seems like it's possible to review them in a single PR. So it could just be a simplification where, you know, you submit that an RFC, you have a review, and then, um, you know, it gets approved as part of the PR, or if it can't get approved in that set, then, you know, you go back, make an update, make a new PR, reference the old one. Um, and then we use like the, the pull request history to track, you know, uh, what happened to the various proposals. Um, and so what actually gets written in uh, to the repo are submitted PRs that have only things that have actually been vetted and approved. Uh, it seems like that's sort of the process we've actually been following. Um, and that seems like it works. Uh, I don't know what other people think about just simplifying to making, keeping the same RFC like template that we've been using, but just simplifying it to you make a PR and if everyone approves it, then it's an approved RFC. I don't know the answer, but I, the question also applies for the specification repo. And I think it's a, I'm not sure it's the same problem though. I can see a funny thing happening where you get your RFCs approved and then you bring it over to the specification and there's a certain amount of like review about how, how does the wording work uh, at that stage. And I think that's totally fine, but we should probably be wary about maybe relitigating it issues like I wouldn't want the the meaning to change between like the RFC and what goes into the spec as we start. there's there's a temptation to change names though because people are finally seeing everything put in the one document and it's sort of like mm -hmm. I, as I say it's, it's hard for people to follow these lengthy individual RFCs so for example Michael who's on this call uh, got to reviewing the specification yesterday and has raised some things that could have been discussed in the RFCs but just kind of weren't so um, my question now is like, are we relitigating? Should we go back to the design 
drawing board. I don't, I don't think we should, but it, I mean, I think, I've always believed that we were not going to make everyone happy. So, so I think, I think we should merge something, but, but if there are problems with the, with people not understanding the wording, I think we should resolve them before. If there are changes about, uh, for example, uh, we decided to uh, call something gate and now it's no longer called gate, is true, then I think that that is a separate issue and I think we should create an issue for that and discuss it separately. So I think comments about, hey, this should not, uh, like something that I commented there, like try to not put uh, implementation details necessary into the into this uh, thing this can be resolved because like literally we try to keep a standard of what is in the API what is in the SDK and stuff like that or somebody suggests like hey better to say way to express more relevant things I think this should be fixed uh, but comments ne necessary about changing the, the decisions that we had documented in the text, I think they should be uh, create separate issues. I mean, we should not ignore them. We should create separate issues and we say, hey, let's move the discussion about it. In this <clears throat> where, do you think, where do you think those issues should be filed? Uh, specs. Just go okay. Yeah, so like, for example, the, the major one that was raised is one that has been discussed. Like, there's history here, but it's sort of like about how you configure your aggregations. And so, um, on the one hand, maybe we've just like, we're only halfway there in the sense that we've designed and or specified the API, but we haven't talked at all about how the SDK gets configured and like what you might do with, or this mythical views API or something like that might help. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I also... I also posted in one of the issues uh, in Java something related to that. I think I think you just create an issue, and I will also add more comments there and everything. But but for this kind of things, you should uh, you should encourage people. Either you create the issue, copy pasting their comments and stuff, or you ask them to hey move this to an issue, whatever you feel comfortable with. But I think these kind of things that are not relevant for for your main. I I see. I agree. That's. Sounds great. So I will make issues. It's probably better for me to phrase them than for the individuals. Um, okay. But uh, that sounds good. I'll but do that me, today. Like, Please I, go ahead. I, I don't think that we should actually be adding things to the specs repo that we don't intend people to implement because there is like some outstanding issue about some aspect of the spec. Um, I, I think what's going to happen, I think we already see this happening like in the, the JavaScript repo, is that people use the spec as justification for implementation decisions. And they don't check the history to see if something in the spec is like still in flight or well defended or has some open issue. So I think anything that actually goes into the, the specs repo that gets committed, people are going to start implementing. And so I think we should be very careful about what actually goes into specs. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the most substantial question that Michael raised was really about how you configure aggregations. And I, you know, I personally think it'd be nice if you could specify options for aggregation, just uh, sort of specification in the metric instrument as you declare it. But it's something that could be added as an option later. It's not a requirement to do this. <laughs> yeah, and I know you've got the the like the OTEP that you didn't include in this one on aggregations. And I, I think yeah, that that keeps like coming back, on right? Yeah, I, I I think that one is worth opening in an issue in specs to say like the reason that aggregation yeah. isn't defined. That'll in that'll system. that'll be the first issue I filed today. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. I have nothing else to say on that. Okay. I'll open an issue after after this call to propose simplifying the, the OTEPS process. Um, do we have any other action items to draw out of this around like the spec procedure? Seems like that was the main one. Maybe. Oh, um, one, one question that I had. Uh, and maybe worth discussing a bit here is uh, the the RFC about version, which mm -hmm. I think in the end became like super small RFC. And I'm like concerned that if for such a thing, we, need, we really need an RFC or directly a specs modification will be good because uh, it, yes, it started as a, as a proposal to add a, a type called version uh, which would have been something probably we would require an RFC for this because we want a new type into the API and so on. But it ended up as being just a, a f format for a string to be like uh, 
SEMVAR column, whatever, and the Git column, whatever, and stuff like that. For these kind of things, I mean, I feel like having a RFC just for a semantic version, a semantic convention for this version attribute or label, it's too much. Do you want to put a link to that, that in the meeting notes so we can have a look? Yeah. Re related to that, uh, we have not up till now been explicitly versioning the specification. Um, given that we're moving closer to like an alpha thing, um, I think there's going to be a need very soon to be able to express you know, uh, the tracing stuff we have is this version of the spec, but we haven't updated the metric stuff yet. So it's at, you know, tracings at 1.1 metrics at 1.0 or something like that. Um, I don't know if anyone has a proposal for how to version the spec going forwards, but uh, it would be great to see something like that start to happen soon. So yeah, I added the uh, OTEP, uh, that is the version. Great. But anyway, in, for me, it's like, this is now, at this point, it's super, super trivial and probably not controversial change. Do we really need uh, an, uh, an uh, RFC for this, or are we just gonna go with the, with the specs in this case? Yeah, if I may give my opinion, I think that, yeah, we should make it easy enough, you know, to have these kind of changes just directly in the specification and only we deem them important enough to the entire pipeline. Yeah, that, that's my feeling as well. I feel like, I feel like uh, Austin worked too hard for such a small change, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like how do we just make small direct changes to the spec without having to go through RFCs and stuff like that? Yes. Yeah. And then how do we version the spec when we do that? Yeah. I think, I think the versioning of the spec, we should start, once we get to alpha, I think we should start to have a, uh, uh, what's, what's the name of that, uh, a, a file where we keep all the changes. Uh, change log. Change log? Yeah, change log, kind of a change log for, for all of these things. So, and then, and then when we tag, a new spec from the change log, we should at least put all the, the major changes that happen into the, the new tags and people can at least read them. Yeah. That makes perfect sense. A change log, even a change log that just links to the issues or PRs or whatever, you know, would be great. I mean, with a small explanation of what change, yeah. kind of a TLDR for everything. Yep, TLDR yeah. and then GitHub gives us more deeper history for people. Yeah. Cool. Well, I don't want to take time away from .NET, which is spinning up now at 9 a.m. Uh, so. See you, everyone. Thanks. Good seeing you all. See you later. Thanks. Ciao. Bye-bye.